Hey, Pauline. Something's making my allergies go wacky. Julia T. Yes, indeed. Somewhere in Kansas. That says it all. Somewhere. It all looks the same once you get past the eastern side. Praying for safe travels for you and Donnie, and that it will be beautiful when you get where you're going in Colorado. Kathy Kay. Yes, indeed, over the rainbow. <laughs> indeed, yes, indeed. Still looking for a sunflower in the sunflower state. Judah Spencer, good to see you. I'm going to move inside. I'm hacking and coughing way too much. Let's try that again. Apologies. I have something in the air was just making my allergies go insane. Ah, that's much better. 
All right, well, thank you for your patience. And let's go ahead and get started. We are on page 115. Hey, Rebecca, good to see you. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And on page 116, my friends, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. <clears throat> hey, Lisa. <clears throat> On page 118 is the Fos Hilaron. Let us pray that together. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light. We sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Today's saint is a Chippewa Indian named Enmegabo. I'll read his biography later, but he was uh, a missionary came originally from Canada, but was a missionary to the natives, mostly in Minnesota, in the mid and late 1800s. And he was the first Native American that we're aware of that was ordained a priest in the Episcopal Church. So the psalm for today, in honor of him, Psalm 129, which is on page 784. Page 784, Psalm 129. When you get there, let us pray through that together. Page 784, Psalm 129. Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth, let Israel now say. Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth, but they have not prevailed against me. The plowmen plowed upon my back and made their furrows long. The Lord, the righteous one, has cut the cords of the wicked. Let them be put to shame and thrown back, all those who are enemies of Zion. <clears throat> Let them be like grass upon the housetops, which withers before it can be plucked, which does not fill the hand of the reaper, or the bosom of him who binds the sheaves, so that those who go by say not so much as, The Lord prosper you. We wish you well in the name of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Second reading is from the prophet Isaiah. This is chapter 52. Wait a moment to get to my marker. There we go. All right, Isaiah 52, verses 7 through 10. <clears throat> and this evening I'll be reading from the message. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger bringing good news, breaking the news that all's well, 
proclaiming good times, announcing salvation, telling Zion, your God reigns. Voices, listen, your scouts are shouting, thunderclap shouts, shouting in joyful unison. They see with their own eyes, God coming back to Zion. Break into song, boom it out, ruins of Jerusalem. God has comforted his people. He's redeemed Jerusalem. God has rolled up his sleeves. All the nations can see his holy, muscled arm. Everyone from one end of the earth to the other sees him at work, doing his salvation work. The word of the Lord. So that's Isaiah 52. It's near the end of the book of Isaiah. And one of the primary and most hopeful, in my mind, themes about the book of Isaiah is the fact that God is with his people. One of the, uh, the book of Isaiah was written probably by two or three different authors during a time when the kingdom of Judah, the last independent Hebrew kingdom, was being destroyed by the Babylonians. The people were led into exile. And in ancient times, a lot of cultures believed that gods and goddesses lived in one particular place, that they were stuck in a tree or on a hilltop, or that they guarded a particular city, like Athena was the patron saint of Athens in Greece, right? But a lot of people believed that gods only stayed in one location, and so if a city or a country was conquered by another city or country, it was proof that that conquered city's god wasn't powerful enough. And so they abandoned that god, and they started worshiping the god of whoever conquered them, because clearly that god was the more powerful god. So the uh, Hebrew scriptures are filled with how powerful our God is, that sort of thing. And as time went on and uh, religion came to be centered on the temple in the city of Jerusalem, the belief was that God rested there in the temple. Yet when Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians and the Hebrew people were hauled into captivity, of course, that caused a major crisis of faith. So what we've got today and what happens in the book of Isaiah is a gradual awakening by the, by the Jewish people that God was not limited to Jerusalem or to the temple in Jerusalem, but that, that God is with them wherever they are. And uh, as you heard in those verses, they were talking about the ruins of Jerusalem, which was destroyed by the Babylonians, that God was going to lead his people back there and that eventually God would dwell physically or will dwell physically with his people in Jerusalem and that the world will come to Jerusalem to be a part of God's peaceable kingdom, God's prosperous and peaceable kingdom. And so it's hope and uh, an unveiling sort of of God's ultimate plan for all of God's people, Jew and Gentile. So it's beautiful that way. All right, as I said before, Our saint for today is the first Native American Episcopal priest, and the Gabo. Uh, he was born about 1807. <clears throat> he was born in Canada, and I was wrong. Uh, he ministered to the Chippewa, but he or Ojibwe ministered to the Ojibwe, but he was Ottawa. So, and the Gabo was an Ottawa Indian from Canada. He came into the United States as a Methodist missionary in 1832, so he was about 25 years old. At one point, he attempted to abandon missionary work and return to Canada, but his boat was turned back by storms on Lake Superior and provided him a vision. And he said, here Mr. Jonah came before me and said, ah, my friend, I know you. You are a fugitive. You have sinned and disobeyed God instead of going to the city of Nineveh, where God sent you to spread his word to the people. You started to go and then turned aside. <clears throat> he invited a priest named James Lloyd Breck to Gull Lake, where they founded St. Columba's Mission in 1852. The mission was later moved to White Earth, where he served until his death in 1902 at the age of 95, unwelcome for a time among some Ojibwe groups because he warned the community about the uprising. He was consistent as a man of peace. And his name, Enmegabo, means the one who stands in prayer before his people. He's the first recognized Native American priest in the Episcopal Church. He was ordained a deacon in 1859 and a priest in 1867. 
He helped train many others to serve as clergy throughout northern Minnesota. The powerful tradition of Ojibwe hymn singing is a living testimony to their work. His understanding of Native tradition helped him to enculturate Christianity in the language and traditions of the Ojibwe. So, and Megabe. <clears throat> One of those folks whose history, unfortunately, the church forgets very easily as someone who had a profound influence on the lives of many people, but, but uh, is easy to forget, or has been easy to forget by the church. All right, our canticle for this evening is on page 120. It's the Song of Simeon. <clears throat> Please join me there. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. <clears throat> and continuing on page 122, let's pray suffrages B together. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of Emmegabe, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. Almighty God, you led your pilgrim people of old with fire and cloud. Grant that the ministers of your church, following the example of blessed and Megabo, may stand before your holy people, leading them with fiery zeal and gentle humility. This we ask through Jesus the Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Page 123 is the Collect for Saturdays. Please pray with me. O God, the source of eternal light, shed forth your unending day upon us who watch for you, that our lips may praise you, our lives may bless you, and our worship on the morrow give you glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Tonight, I'm going to use this book again, Women's Uncommon Prayers, and I will pray the prayer for healing from abuse. Jesus, by your gentle touch and encouraging word, you raised up the woman who had been bent over, lift up the heads and hearts of those who had been bowed down by the shame and pain of abuse. Heal them so that they may stand up with dignity and may praise you through the living of their lives in fullness and in hope. And if you will, turn with me to page 830. We've got one or two people tonight with birthdays, so let's pray the birthday prayer. Uh, page 830, prayer 51.
page 830, prayer 51. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your thanksgivings and intercessions silently, aloud, or typed in the chat box. Again, Father, I give thanks for folks with birthdays. I lift up folks who are traveling. May they be safe. May they enjoy their time away. May they be restful and healing. May they be surrounded by the beauty of nature. I give you thanks for this time together and for each person gathered here. Please bless them. May we rest well tonight and wake up refreshed and ready for your service in the morning. Amen. <clears throat> Right. Our final prayer is page 126, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. When you get there, let us pray that together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. My friends, let us bless the Lord. May the God of hope Fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As always, love worshiping and walking with you. Let your clergy know if there's anything we can be praying for or doing for you. And I hope you have a blessed and safe evening.